Animal Production Lesson Number 4 Apply Safety Measures on Farm Operations At the end of this lesson, you are expected to do the following Apply appropriate safety measures and safely keep disposed materials and outfit Every farm is different, but hazards common to most farm includes animals, injuries inflicted by animals can include bites, kicks, crushing, ramming, trampling, and transmission of certain infectious diseases such as Giardia, Salmonella, Ringworm, and Leptospariosis. Number 2. Chemicals. Pesticides and herbicides can cause injuries such as burns, respiratory illness, or poisoning. Number 3. Confined spaces such as silos, water tanks, milk vats, and manure pits may contain unsafe atmospheres which can cause poisoning or suffocation. Number 4. Electricity Dangers include faulty switches, cords, machinery, or overhead power lines. 5. Heights. Falls from ladders, rooftops, silos, and windmill are a major cause of injury. 6. Machinery. Hazards include tractors without rollover protection in structures, power takeoff, shafts, chainsaws, augers, motorbikes, and machinery with unguarded moving parts. 7. Noise pollution. Noise from livestock, machinery, and guns can affect your hearing. 8. Vehicles Crashes or falls from motorbikes, two-wheel, and quad bikes tractors. 9. Water Drowning can occur in as little as 5 cm of water. Dams, lakes, ponds, rivers, channels, tanks, drums, and creeks are all hazards. Young children are particularly at risk. Last, weather. Hazards include sunburn, heat stroke, dehydration, and hypothermia. Health and safety hazards on farms. Farm workers, including farm families and migrant workers, are exposed to hazards such as the following. Chemicals, pesticides, livestock handling, slips, trips, falls, machinery, equipment, sun, heat, highway traffic, electricity, lifting, cold, hand tools, noise, dust, ponds, silos, wells, toxic gases, grain beans, manure pits, tractors, mud. High Risk Factors on Farms the following factors may increase risk of injury or illness for farm workers. Age. Injury rates are highest among children aged 15 and under and adults over 65. Equipment and machinery. Most farm accidents and fatalities involve machinery, proper machine, guarding and doing equipment maintenance according to manufacturer's recommendations can help prevent accidents. Protective equipment. Using protective equipment such as seat belts on tractors and personal protective equipment such as safety gloves, coveralls, boots, hats, aprons, goggles, and face shields could significantly reduce farming injuries. Last, medical care. Hospitals and emergency medical care are typically not readily accessible in rural areas near farms. Personal Protective Equipment The law requires that personal protective equipment be provided for use at work and must meet an appropriate standard and must be CE mark. The key issues are personal protective equipment, respiratory protective equipment, and gases and vapors. Personal Protective Equipment or PPE includes the following Coveralls, Eye Protection, Footwear, Gloves, Hearing Protection, Respiratory Protective Equipment or RPE, Safety Helmets, Wet Weather Clothing. Take note that your health and safety and that of your workers can depend on it. 
When selecting PPE, remember the following. Number one, you need to consider and introduce other means of protection first. Provide PPE only as a last resort after taking all other reasonably practicable measures. Number two, engineering controls provide long-term solutions and are often cheaper than providing, replacing, maintaining, and storing PPE. Number three, controls at source protect all workers in the area while PPE only protects the wearer. Number four, it is essential to involve your workers in the selection process as they often have detailed knowledge of the way things work or the way they do tasks, which can help you. Number five, is effective and gives adequate protection against the hazards in the workplace. Number six, is suitable and matches the wearer, the task and the working environment so it does not get in the way of the job being done or cause any discomfort. Number seven, does not mark or does not introduce any additional risk, example limits visibility. Number eight, a CE mark to confirm that it has been made to an appropriate standard. Number nine, it is compatible with any other PPE that has to be worn. Safety spectacles may interfere with the feet of some respirators. Three, respiratory protective equipment or RPE. Suitable RPE can be used to provide protection against two broad types of substance. Dust, fibers, mists, fumes, microorganisms, gases, and vapors. Respirators come in various forms including disposal half-mass respirators, full face mass respirators with filters or powered respirators. A well-fitting and well-fitted disposable respirator conforming to BSEN 149-2001 will protect against dust, fibers, etc. A powered helmet to BSEN 129-41-1999 with a correct filter may be more appropriate in many work situations if a disposable respirator is unsuitable, like for example, for people with beards. RPE with a high level of protection is necessary for very dusty jobs or where there is a high risk of occupational asthma or farmer's lungs, example, cleaning grain stores or poultry houses. Face feed testing, as described in HSG 5.3, must be done for all respirators that rely on a good face seal to be effective. Example, disposable half and full mask or full face mask. This ensures that the respirator can fit properly, but the fit still needs to be checked before each use. If in doubt, ask advice from a reputable supplier or manufacturer. Gases and Vapors this website cannot give accurate guidance to allow you to select protections against gases and vapors. You need to get information about the substances present, the work to be done, the environmental conditions, how long the respirator is to be worn, and uh, then seek advice from a competent supplier or manufacturer. This is because among other reasons, gas and vapors filter rely on absorbing the contaminant and different absorbents. Uh, are used to different gases. It is also difficult to know when filters need changing when the absorbent is saturated. The gas will pass through the filter. Respirators relying on filtration for their efficiency should never be used to provide protection in oxygen deficient atmospheres. So uh, we have here pictures, uh, example for the personal protective equipment. First aid is an important part of our preparedness planning. Of course, we rely on medical professionals, but we also know how to handle basic first aid in an emergency too. We feel it's important to be able to respond to immediate crisis, or what we call the ASAP, since it can make the difference between life and death. What's more, we realize that in a major disaster, emergency services may be overloaded. For instance, in a major weather event, the snowstorm, hurricane, or whatsoever, the authorities may be occupied or centralized care centers, so help at our home may be unavailable or long incoming. Therefore, we've realized that we must have both first aid supplies and the skills or knowledge to use them. We keep multiple first aid kits. We have our main suppliers in one central location in our house. However, we also maintain some first aid supplies in our cars and a portable kit in our evacuation supplies. Our portable kits are customized for our needs and have a bit more than the most low-cost prepackaged kits you'll find in stores. So, uh, we have the Asita 
Minofen, Adhesive Bandages, Adhesive Tape, Alcohol Prep Pads, Alcohol Paste Hand Sanitizing Gel, Antibiotic Ointment, Assorted Adhesive Bandages, Chemical Heat Packs, Elastic Bandages, which is 3 inch wide, Gauze Bandage, 3 inch roll, Ibuprofen, Non-Latex Disposable uh, Gloves, Oral Antihistamine, over-the-counter diarrhea, medication, self-adhesive bandage 2-inch roll, soap, sterilized gauze pad 3x3-inch, sterilized gauze pad 4x4-inch, and of course, sunscreen. Basic first aid procedures A. Injury treatment. Nose bleeds. Pinch nose and tilt head forward. 2. Animal bites. Wash wound, identify animal, and report the bite. 3. Serious falls. Do not move the victim, call emergency hotline. 4. Severe wounds. Have the victim seat or lie down, apply direct pressure to stop the bleeding, call emergency hotline. 5. Small wounds. Wash the wound, apply dressing and bandage. 6. Bruises. Apply a cold compress. B. Burns. Number one, first and second degree burn. Uh, put burn in cold water, pat dry and cover with clean bandage. Do not break blisters. A first degree burn is red, sore, and covers a small area. A second degree burn is blistered and painful. So this is how you identify the first degree and the second degree burn. The third degree, do not put water on an open wound. Do not remove burn on clothing. Cover the burn lightly and get medical help. A third degree burn causes the skin to be white or charred and there is a loss of skin layers. Protect tools from the elements. Blades such as electric hedge, trimmer blades, hoe, shovel, and other metal surfaces can be sprayed with lubricant oil. Spray the blades, then turn them on to make sure oil works into all areas. All electrical and petrol gardening equipment need to be covered with a blanket or sheet if kept in the shed. This will prevent dust and dirt from getting to them. General Cleaning Procedures The farmer and or farm workers responsible for cleaning must adhere as much as possible to the following procedures. Be properly trained on the cleaning procedures. Second, develop a cleaning program and schedule according to the recommended frequency and the cleaning program should be monitored to ensure its effectiveness. Third, cleaning must not take place while fresh vegetables are being harvested, packed, handled, and stored. Fourth, water that is used for cleaning must be safe. Fifth, the cleaning of equipments, tools, and containers must take place in a designated area away from the field and the storage of agricultural inputs and fresh vegetables. Sixth, when using cleaning and disinfecting chemicals, the farmer and or farm workers must become familiar with the instructional use of this product. Seventh, strictly adhere to all precautionary statements and mixing instructions. 8. Protect equipments, tools, containers, and fresh vegetables when working with any chemicals. Cleaning reusable containers. The farmer and or farm workers responsible for cleaning reusable containers must adhere as much as possible to the following procedures. First, remove as much as possible plant debris, soil, and residue of any kind. Use a brush or appropriate tool when necessary. Second, inspect containers for the physical damage which might endure, spoil, and contaminate fresh vegetable if found repair them. Third, inspect containers for any missed plant debris, soil, and residue if found recleaned. Fourth, if cleaning and or disinfecting chemicals are used, follow label instructions for mixing. Fifth, rinse containers with clean water. Sixth, when possible containers should be placed in the full sun for rapid drying. Seventh, store reusable containers properly to avoid contamination. Cleaning equipment, tools, and garbage cans. The farmer and or farm workers responsible for cleaning the equipment, which is example the tables, racks, plastic, sheets, etc. Tools, example, secateur, knives, 
brushes, etc. And garbage cans must be adhered as much as possible to the following procedure. First, remove as much as possible plant debris, soil and residue of any kind. Use a brush or another appropriate tool when necessary. Second, inspect equipments for physical damage which might injure, spoil, and contaminate fresh vegetables. If found, repair them. Third, inspect equipment, tools, and garbage cans for any misplant debris, soil, and residue if found, clean again. Fourth, if cleaning and or disinfecting chemicals are used, follow label instruction for mixing. Fifth, as required, apply cleaning materials such as detergent or disinfecting chemicals and ensure that no spots are missed. Sixth, rinse with safe water. If there are parts of the equipment that cannot be rinsed with water, use a clean, wet towel and follow the same procedures for cleaning. Seventh, ensure that small equipments and tools do not touch the ground floor after the cleaning procedures. Cleaning areas for handling and starting fresh produce. The farmer and or farm workers responsible for cleaning these areas must adhere as much as possible to the following procedures. First, unplug any electrical equipments and if possible, cover with plastic electrical motors, electrical boxes, connections, light fixtures, etc. Do not use packaging materials for this task. Second, remove trash and any accumulated plant debris from the floors. Third, using low-pressure water, rinse the entire ceiling infrastructure and light fixtures to remove any dust and soil buildup. Rinse walls, windows, and doors from the top downward and rinse the entire floor surface to remove any soil buildup. Be careful of not splashing water onto equipments. Fourth, if necessary, shrub or scrub areas with brush and cleaning materials such as detergent and ensure that no spots are missed. Fifth, after scrubbing areas with cleaning materials, rinse surface areas as described. Previously, wash out drains so be careful of not splashing water onto equipments. Sixth, if cleaning and or disinfecting chemicals are used, follow label instruction for mixing. Cleaning Hygienic Facilities the farmer and or farm workers responsible for these cleaning hygienic facilities must adhere as much as possible to the following procedures. First, pick up trash from the floors and throw into garbage bins. Second, by using the proper detergent, clean toilets, sinks, and other fixtures. Third, using low-pressure water, rinse the entire floor surface to remove any soil buildup. Fourth, if cleaning and or disinfecting chemicals are used, follow label instructions for mixing. Fifth, as required, apply cleaning materials or disinfecting chemicals to entire floor surface area. Scrub areas with brush if needed and ensure that no spots are missed. Sixth, rinse floor and drains. Seventh, remove excess water and allow drying out of at room temperature. Eight, ensure that hygienic facilities have enough toilet paper, papers, soap, and disposable towel. Technique in storing chemicals. Chemicals are used on farms for a variety of purposes. The safe management of chemicals requires access to information and responsible action. Manufacturers, suppliers, and users of farm chemicals all have an important role to play. Chemical substances present different types of risk to people's health, safety, and the environment. For this reason, there are different laws controlling them. The purpose of these laws is to ensure that chemicals are used safely and efficiently so that risk to human health, the environment, and damage to property T is minimized. Safe management of chemicals involves first, correct labeling and packaging. Second, provision of materials safety data sheets or MSDS. Third, safe transport, storage, use, and disposal of substances. Labeling and packaging of chemicals. Chemicals must be supplied in packages that are correctly labeled and suitable for the substance. Information provided on the label will depend on the type of substance and the risk associated with it. Items to look for are, first, signal word such as caution, poison, or dangerous poison. A signal that words alerts users to the possibility of poisoning if the substance is swallowed, inhaled, or absorbed through the skin. Second, the dangerous gouge, ADG, 
if there is an immediate risk to health or safety, example, flammable liquids. Third, risk braces, describing the type of health effects, example, irritating the skin, and safety braces, stating precautions for the safe handling, storage, spills, disposal, and fire, example, keep away from combustible material. Ensure the containers remained labeled. Farmers must ensure that the original labels remain on containers of substances. If a substance is poured into a second container such as a spray tank, then that container must be labeled with the product name and appropriate risk and safety braces. This can generally be copied from the parent container. Labeling is not necessary if a substance is used immediately and its container is thoroughly cleaned. There are good reasons for ensuring that proper containers and appropriate labels are used, including, first, using food containers to store poisons can result in poisoning due to accidental swallowing. Second, insur insurance companies may question liability if something goes wrong and an unlabeled container has been the cause of an incident. And third, produced cannot be exported if maximum residue limits are exceeded labels. Provide advance on permitted use and withholding periods for agricultural and veterinary chemicals. Material Safety Data Sheets Material safety data sheets must be produced by the manufacturer or importer of hazardous substance. The MSDS is not just a piece of paper. It provides important and useful advice about what is in the product its health effects, safe use and handling, storage and disposal, first aid and emergency operation. Farmers must obtain the MSDS from their supplier and keep them in a register where they are available to people who could be exposed to the hazardous substance. The register is a collection of the MSDS and other information which can be kept in a folder, filing cabinet or other practical system. The register can be kept in the house, workplace, or the chemical store, so long as it remains accessible to emergency service personnel and any employees who may be exposed to hazardous substances. Storage and Transport of Chemicals Safe storage of farm chemicals is needed to protect them from the elements restrict access to them, prevent contamination of the environment, food, or livestock, and ensure separation from other incompatible chemicals. Arrangement must be in a place to contain any spillage of the chemical. After considering the potential risk to the people's health or to the environment, a farmer might decide that a lock shed with a roof and concrete floor which is bounded to contain any spills is the best way to provide safe storage. Remember, you should never store oxidizing agents with few fuels. That is, never store the substances labeled yellow diamond with a red diamond. Safe transport of farm chemicals depends on what that substance is, how much there is, where it is to be transported, and what else is to be transported with it. In general, small quantities, which is less than 250 liters, can be transported on vehicle provided that the container is properly secured and safe from spillage. Disposal of farm chemicals. Empty farm chemical containers and unwanted chemicals need to be disposed or properly prior to disposal of empty containers. Wash the container out three times and use the rinse water to dilute further batches of the chemical to working strength. To wash a container, you do not need to fill it each time. If you only have 6 liters of water, it is more efficient to use 3 washes of 2 liters each than it is to rinse once with a full 6 liters. Legal Basis Presidential Decree 1152, the Philippine Environmental Code, which took effect in 1977, provides a basis for an integrated waste management regulation starting from waste source to methods of disposal. Presidential Decree 1152 was further mandated specific guidelines to manage municipal waste which is either solid or liquid, sanitary landfill and incineration, and disposal sites in the Philippines. In 1990, the Philippine Congress enacted the Toxic Substances Hazardous and Nuclear Waste Control Act, commonly known as Republic Act 6969, although designed to respond to increasing problems associated with toxic chemicals and hazardous and nuclear waste. Republic Act 6969 mandates control and management of import, manufacture, process, distribution, use, transport, 
treatment and disposal of toxic substances and hazardous and nuclear waste in the country. The Act seeks to protect public health and the environment from unreasonable risk posed by these substances in the Philippines. Apart from the basic policy, rules, and regulation of Republic Act 6969, hazardous waste management must also comply with the requirements of other specific environmental laws such as Presidential Decree 984, Pollution Control Law, Presidential Degree 1586, Envi Environmental Impact Assessment System Law, Republic Act 8749, Clean Air Act, and Republic Act 9003, Ecological Solid Waste Management Act, and their implementing rules and regulation. Farm Waste Management Farm Waste Management covers the responsible storage, collection, and disposal of all farm waste and the preparation and implementation of a Farm Waste Management Plan. The Farm Waste Management Plan must take into account the collection, storage, and disposal of all farm waste. Implementation of the plan will reduce the risk of pollution and prevent the loss of valuable nutrients in slurry and farmyard manure. The plan consists of two parts. Part 1. A completed farm waste checklist for the farm. The purpose of the checklist is to identify remedial works and changes in management practice that are required to ensure a high standard of farm waste management. Part 2. A complete farm waste location plan. This plan is a copy of your farm map showing areas of the farm that are suitable and unsuitable for spreading agricultural waste. Farm waste checklist with identified remedial works, changes in management practice. This is a record of a condition of farm waste facilities and management practices as observed at the date of completion. Completion of the checklist will enable you to audit your farm yard and farm to ensure that the farm waste management standards, including disposal of manures, silage, effluent, waste plastics, fallen animals, and veterinary waste are managed to a standard beyond current legislations and good farming practice. The checklist must be continually kept under review and updated annually. Keep the whole farm free of rubbish, litter, and anything that would distract from the appearance of the countryside. Farm Waste Location Plan A farm waste location plan is a copy of your farm map color-coded as follows. Blue, waterways including any on the farm boundary. Red, areas where organic waste should never be applied. Orange, areas from which there is a high risk of pollution occurring may be part of the whole fields. Farm waste may be applied to these areas at certain times of the year, but before spreading, always ensure that there is no risk of pollution occurring. Green, all remaining areas. This can be used for spreading at any time of the year when the land and weather condition are suitable. White, areas not normally used for spreading organic waste and mark them with an X.